Barnes & Noble introduced its Nook Color e-reader late last year to compete with Amazon.com's Kindle. Recently, though, it upgraded the Nook software and has been nudging it more towards the tablet category, so I thought I'd take another look to see just how it works in its new incarnation. The Nook Color, which works only over Wi-Fi, features a bright 7-inch screen, weighs just under a pound, and fits in a jacket pocket. As an e-reader, it's especially good for viewing material with photographs or color illustrations. Cookbooks, kids' books, and magazines all look like far better anywhere. here than they do on the Kindle. Under the hood beats the heart of a smartphone. That's because the Nook Color runs Google's Android operating system, so in theory it could run the universe of Android phone apps. But Barnes & Noble doesn't allow access to the Android market, instead building in some apps to the Nook and offering a limited selection of others through its own app store. While the Nook's always been able to browse the web, now it comes with email software that can handle up to six accounts. It also now lets you run videos that use Adobe's Flash technology, and you can download a calendar or even Angry Birds from the BNN store. The video capabilities are a little hit or miss. Despite the Nook's support for Flash, some YouTube clips wouldn't play. You can theoretically watch movies on the device, but there's no Netflix app in the App Store and no easy way to acquire content. In addition, the Nook's processor isn't very powerful, making it feel sluggish sometimes, and it only stores 8 gigabytes worth of data. That's a lot of books, but if you're going to use it for multimedia content, you'll probably want to stick a memory card into the Nook's expansion slot. Now, people who really want or need a tablet aren't likely to be satisfied with a Nook Color for very long. The limitations become more evident the more you use it. But at half the price of the cheapest iPad, it may be an acceptable substitute for people with lightweight needs and slender wallets. For Bloomberg News and Business Week, I'm Rich Jaroslavsky.